video is going to be a very basic introduction to the topic of trimix. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great, as always, to see all of your smiling faces out there in YouTube land. I hope you're all doing really, really well. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We make videos at Divers Ready with one simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better, more well-informed, or safer scuba diver. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive and our subscribe button down there. Hit that little bell icon so you're notified every time we drop a new video. And I'd really appreciate it. It really helps help us out. Right, maybe you've heard the term batted around on a dive boat before and kind of nodded and smiled politely but you didn't really know what trimix meant so you kind of kept out of the conversation to avoid embarrassing yourself. Well, next time someone mentions exotic breathing gas mediums, you'll be a little bit more in the know with the help of this video. This video is only meant as a super high level primer. There is a lot more knowledge required to dive with Trimix than I could possibly hope to fit in a 10 to 15 minute video. This is a supplementary and trivial information based video only. As always, with all of our content that we put out, always seek proper training from an authorized scuba instructor, like me, through a recognized training agency. In this video, we're gonna cover four very simple points. Number one, what is Trimix? What do we mean when we say Trimix? Why do divers use Trimix? When do divers use Trimix? And what are the pros and cons of using Trimix on a dive? Straightforward enough. Let's dive straight into it then. What is Trimix? Trimix essentially is an umbrella term for a breathing gas mixture containing a blend of three different gases. Tri meaning three and mix meaning well, mix. Those three gases in question are oxygen, nitrogen, and helium. Air could theoretically be called a decamix, as it's actually a blend of 10 different gases. Air has a helium content, 0.0005% or five parts per million to be precise, which is not enough to make a difference to us as divers. For diving purposes, we consider air to be 20.9% oxygen, and because we oxygen is the only gas we metabolize, we add all the small percentage gases into the nitrogen bundle and just call it 79.1% for the purposes of decompression. When we blend Trimix, we are purposefully increasing the helium percentage of our breathing mixture. Ordinarily, you would add helium to your cylinders first to the desired percentage as it is the lightest gas, and then achieve the required O2 percentage for your intended depth by mixing air with pure oxygen. Once the mix is homogenized, that is mixed together, it's ready for anal analysis. You analyze the trimix with a dual sensor analyzer that measures the O2 percentage with a electrochemical sensor, the same type that rebreathers use, same as your nitrox analyzer. And you measure the helium percentage either with a different electrochemical sensor or more recently, as technology moves on, an acoustic sensor, which actually deducts the percentage of helium based on the density of the gas mix as the, it alters the speed of sound between two microphones. Mind blown, mind blown. Okay, so that's what Trimix is. It's a blend of oxygen, nitrogen, and helium. Why do divers use Trimix? Well, two reasons specifically. The big one is to reduce narcosis. Ah, that pesky narcosis, the rapture of the deep, if you remember from your open water training. It's basically a physiological anesthetic response that occurs in your brain when breathing certain gases at higher ambient pressures than we're used to. It can lead to perceptual narrowing, poor judgment and mood swings, all of which can then lead to life-threatening mistakes being made when you're deep underwater. Both oxygen and nitrogen have a narcotic effect. And because of this, increasing your oxygen percentage, as in breathing nitrox, does not reduce your narcosis. Helium has no narcotic effect at all. So diving Trimix keeps your head clear. That's the main point. That's the most important reason for diving Trimix. I've dived Trimix next to divers diving deep on air. And after the dive, we get back. It's incredible the amount of detail I can remember and what they can't. Hey, how awesome was that bull shark we saw at 45 meters swimming along next to the wreck? 
And they'll turn to me and be like, yeah, what bull shark? Now that's deep air. The one that swam right next to us for five minutes. You know the one. No, no, no recall at all. It's truly incredible. The second reason to add helium to your breathing mix is to reduce your O2 percentage to less than air, below 21%. From your nitrox class, you should remember that oxygen gets more toxic the deeper you dive. The diving community has established limits for how high a diver should allow their partial pressure of oxygen to get. Typically 1.4 partial pressure of O2 for the working portion of a dive. If you're a technical diver, and let's say you want to do a dive to 60 meters, 200 feet, seven atmospheres, you would hit the 1.4 partial pressure of oxygen with 20% of O2. So you'd need to reduce the O2 percentage of air, 20.9%, down to 20%. And to do this, you'll have to add a different gas proportionally into the mix. Obviously, you wouldn't want to add more nitrogen because that doesn't help the narcosis issue. So helium is the obvious choice being non-narcotic. So again, we use helium to reduce narcosis and to achieve lower O2 percentages. Okay, so when do divers use Trimix? The deeper you dive, the stronger the narcotic effect will be, the stronger your narcosis. So typically, recreational divers can expect some kind of narcotic involvement around the 30 meters, 100 feet mark. Technical divers, depending on the conditions, will typically start adding helium to their mix around 50 meters, 145 feet-ish. Uh, depends on the individual, really. Um, but Trimix can be used shallower, especially in harsh conditions. If it's cold, you're more susceptible to narcosis. So you might see that some uh, tech divers diving shallower will still add helium uh, shallower than that 50 meter, 145 feet mark. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of diving with Trimix? Well, the pros we pretty much already covered. You're gonna keep a clearer head, you're gonna be at less risk of making a narcosis fueled mistake, and you're gonna be able to achieve O2 mixes less than air if you wanna dive deeper than air allows you to dive. But what about the cons? Well, everyone will tell you, first and foremost, Trimix is expensive. How expensive? I can't say for where you live, but typically here in South Florida, breathing grade helium will run you somewhere around $1.70 per cubic feet. So if we keep the math super simple on that, you've got twin 100 cubic feet cylinders that you want filled with 50% of helium, that's 100 cubic feet at $1.70 per cubic foot, that's $170 just for the helium. And then you've got to top that off with oxygen and air to get your desired mix. Yeah. Helium is also in finite supply. It has to be mined, it's extracted from natural gas, which drives the cost up, and eventually one day we're gonna run out. That's all there is to it. Believe it or not, helium is actually the second most populous element in the entire universe, just sadly not here on our little blue planet, as it is. Which means as we move forward into the future and more and more uh, gas supplies are depleted, eventually the helium's gonna dwindle and the supplies are going to dwindle and that's about it not only that but not every dive center stocks and mixes helium to give you another example there's only one dive center in miami Dade county where miami is that can actually blend trimix and there's only one in the whole of the florida keys so it's not that readily available even here where there's a ton of diving and the reason that not every dive center is able to fill and sell Trimix is because you need a lot of specialized equipment and training. A Trimix analyzer on its own will typically run you $700 or so. You need a booster pump to get the O2 highly concentrated and all that kind of stuff. Not to mention the training courses are gonna be quite costly because you need to cover the cost of your gas and your instructor's gas. So if you're already a seasoned advanced nitrox deco procedures level tech diver, the jump to Trimix in terms of knowledge is actually not that huge, but it is absolutely vital requirement if you want to extend your depth range. Another one of the cons is that Trimix is a poor insulator. So if you're diving a dry suit and you need to connect your dry suit inflator to something, it's a bad idea to use a helium based blend for two reasons, number one, as we went over, it's pretty expensive, but also helium is a lousy insulator. So it's not gonna keep you as warm as a denser medium would. Best practice is to carry an alternate gas for dry suit inflation, which means more gear, which means more expense, but hey, nobody said technical diving was gonna be cheap. And if they did, they lied to you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And let me know in the comments down below your favorite narcosis fueled story. I mean, I think I've seen pretty much everything in the industry. I've seen a diver try and give their second stage to a fish because they were knocked out of their mind. Uh, but I want to hear your stories down in the comment section below. If you learned something from this video, if you enjoyed it, share it with one of your friends or give it the old like thumbs up button. I really appreciate that. It helps me out a great deal. Until next time, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Dive safe, dive often. Mm -hmm.